Let's take you here now. The president of Finland, Sauli Ninesto, says the current tension between China and the United States of America is a concern. In an exclusive interview with the SABC, President Ninesto says his country took a decision to join NATO because the citizens of Finland were in favor of that decision after Russia invaded Ukraine. Our international news editor, Sophie Mugwena, spoke to President Ninesto. situation globally has changed to a more challenging and it has been very fruitful to have a possibility to discuss with your president about it because we have to discuss we have to worldwide we have to discuss silence is the worst medicine for challenges what is your observation what is happening around the world you spoke about uh, the world drifting apart or countries yes. drifting apart? It's a development we have uh, maybe seen raising uh, year by year, but uh, the Ukrainian crisis seems to be a kind of a trigger. It's not only anymore only uh, cruel fight, uh, cruel attack of Russians to Ukraine and their defending, but uh, it brings a wider scope uh, uh, clearly to actually to world politics. And we see relation between US and China getting worse, unfortunately. Uh, I would say that um, next uh, meeting of United Nations, I mean General Assemble, in September, it may be very exciting and uh, it will be interesting to hear opinions, worldwide opinions, which we have a possibility of sharing then. But um, at its worst, all this might lead to a very, very sharp development globally uh, to blocks and uh, that never promise is very good. So uh, what I would like to see more discussion, more, uh, let's say, if not agreeing, but understanding that uh, the other one might have a different opinion, but you have to change opinions so that you learn to respect also those who think otherwise because that gives possibilities of making at least some kind of agreement or cooperation how we for example manage our common big challenge that is the climate change you spoke about the un meeting during this challenging time or crisis do you think the multilateral body, the UN, the world body, has conducted itself in a satisfactory manner to try and manage this uh, situation when the UN was formed after the Second World War. The intention was to ensure maintenance of peace. We hear a lot of criticism against the UN for example, the Security Council hasn't been able to make uh, so many decisions because of the veto. But my answer is that uh, if we do not have UN, we have nothing left. And uh, if that is the case, it's uh, uh, getting worse. So we have to try to find this kind of, uh, let's say, understanding each other, respecting each other. Uh, for example, in UN meeting in September, that, that would be my message. The war in Ukraine, you are a neighbor to Russia. How has the war affected your country? What are your concerns? Um, we are a neighbor with a long borderline. We have uh, got along with Russia quite well after Second World War. But there is a memory of generations when uh, Soviet Union attacked Finland in uh, 1939. 
so-called winter war, and we were left alone. Nobody helped us. Uh, we survived that attack, losing uh, some territory, losing a lot of lives, but nevertheless. Now that um, first Russia said that it uh, that was uh, in uh, late 21 that it will not accept NATO enlargement and we had said always that we are militarily non-aligned because of our own will but after Russia said that well you can't join <laughs> It meant that if I would repeat it now to you, you would say that, no, Russia forbid you, it's not your own will anymore. Uh, we noticed this and uh, I took it very uh, seriously. Uh, then when Russia attacked Ukraine, the Finns changed their opinion. So far, only approximately 20% of Finns supported NATO membership. After February 24th, it was 80%. 80% of population said that, yes, we have to join NATO. And uh, how I see it is that uh, we have all the time maximized our security. We have been enhanced partner of NATO more than 10 years. We have had a lot of uh, military exercises with NATO, so it's not a total change. Uh, but maximize your own security doesn't mean that it's against anybody. And uh, security is not a zero game. If we maximize, it's not away from anybody. That's our position. No. And we have full right to maximize our security. Now, Russia is saying that the expansion is a declaration of war. It's threatening its security. How can the world maintain a balance in terms of ensuring that countries such as Finland and other smaller countries who are neighbors of Russia and their security is not threatened in the same way this big country with uh, nuclear capability security is not threatened how do you how can we strike a balance so that the world is at peace and that is uh, most important and uh, i refer back to what i said discussing agreeing or disagreeing in a climate uh, or spirit that you still understand that the other one thinks differently. Uh, to NATO, NATO is a defense union alliance uh, for defense, not for attack. And uh, the situation when Finland and also Sweden, I believe, becomes a member, doesn't change security situation otherwise than that our own security will be maximized. And uh, I refer back to the winter war, I said, we do not want to be left alone. Uh, so this is uh, how I see the situation. But uh, like I said, uh, I'm worried because uh, there is, for example, relation between China USA is uh, uh, it's getting worse and uh, I think that uh, those um, uh, feelings we had last uh, autumn when uh, President uh, Biden and President Xi met that was a positive signal but now we have in a way lost it and getting back to track where where we try to keep uh, uh, peaceful circumstances is most important. What can be the role of South Africa in ensuring that 
we find an amicable solution or cessation of hostilities. I had a very good discussion with your president, President uh, Rama Fosa. Uh, uh, we discussed a lot uh, about uh, the current situation uh, and uh, uh, I think that uh, we and uh, undoubtedly he will continue discussions also elsewhere. It is important to get a peace, but it has to be a just, justified peace for Ukraine. And uh, justified is only a peace which Ukraine can accept. Because the question is about Ukraine, not about anything else. The impact of this war has led to a situation where other challenges are not attended to. Uh, in addition, Ukrainian war, what happens in Sudan, all that, uh, in a way, steals our our <coughs> our uh, our thinking, uh, and uh, it seems that all those problems, challenges you referred, have a bit pushed uh, aside the major problem we have, that is common problem, climate change. And we have to come back on that track. Uh, I just want to tell you that uh, Finland has uh, set a very ambitious target on uh, carbon neutrality uh, 2035. Up to 2035 it's one of the most challenging uh, targets and we are going to go along with that. Uh, we have to understand that uh, climate change is caused by, well, uh, wrong way of uh, economic growth uh, produced in a wrong way. And uh, unfortunately, those who are uh, less guilty for that are now suffering maybe most, and I mean Africa uh, also. Uh, now we have to, and why Finland put these kind of very ambitious targets? Uh, what Finland does, it does not have an impact globally that much, but it's an example and gives us possibility to demand for others who have been living in the same way uh, to uh, put also real targets and uh, strong targets. We uh, have now uh, not that much time to react strongly. Uh, I have expected, and uh, partly it has come to true, a lot from uh, technology and, uh, and new, new investments uh, which are done by totally different logics than the earlier ones. Uh, yes, uh, the question is whether we uh, advance uh, enough rapidly. Uh, but in spite of the fact, even though we find new ways of producing energy, uh, renewable energy, we have to stop make more restrictions on earlier behavior and uh, that is not done enough yet. Your country and others played a very important role to ensure that South Africa is free. What is your message to South Africa and the people of Africa? My message is that uh, you have uh, Africa wonderful continent here in South Africa, wonderful country and a wonderful nation. Keep democracy going on.